Hi, it's Toby from Heavyweight MMA. Today with Grace the Lioness Spicer from Bad Company Gym. How are you? I'm good. I'm good. It's been a while since we last chatted. Um, what have you been up to in the last few months? I did see you had a fight in October against Foltini Nanu. Uh, That's how was the one, that? yeah. yeah how would that go? Uh, yeah, it went. It went good. I, I won. Uh, won the fight. Um, I won most. I won every round. Um, it was a comfortable fight. It was comfortable. I, I thought it was probably going to be a bit harder than it was, which which is sometimes a good thing. Um, the last round, of probably because I knew I was winning, I got a bit cocky and was doing a bit of stupid things like throwing like mad elbows and stuff. But uh, yeah, it was a good fight. Yeah, I did watch it. It's on YouTube, so I had a look at it. And uh, yeah, it's a good fight. And I guess that's a time you can try those things that you might not always be able to try, yeah? Yeah. I mean, Andy weren't too pleased with me, but uh, <laughs> I was having a good time. <laughs> Let's not pretend Andy and Liam never tried some flashy stuff, right? Exactly. Yeah, exactly. I said I actually have said to Andy before he had a go at me. I won the fight, but I had a bit of a like um, a bit of a harder fight than I should have had because I just made it into a war. And I said to him after the fight, I was just trying to be like you, and he smacked <laughs> around the head. <laughs> <laughs> That's it. Hey, I should mention thanks to Roadhouse and Kieran Carruthers for helping hook us up for an interview. By the way. Yeah, hundred percent. Cool. So COVID's been an issue, but now you're back in the thick of things, right? Not not being able to fight as much as you'd like, I imagine, over the last year or so. Um, but now you're fighting again on the 2nd of April against Charlotte Gray on Muay Thai Grand Prix for a for another belt. Yeah, so that I'm not fighting her anymore. Oh, you're not? Uh, they haven't they haven't no, they haven't released a new poster yet. Um my opponent's changed about four times. Yep. Um, but I've got an, I've got one now. Um, I'm fighting a Spanish girl. Um, her name's Francesca. I'm not sure how you say the second name, if I'm honest. Um, <laughs> I don't want to say it wrong, <laughs> but yeah. uh, she, she's good. She's good. Yeah, yeah. She's decent. She's going to she's gonna come at me. I know that. So, um, yeah, it's going to be a good fight. It's probably a harder fight for me, to be fair, but um, I haven't got a problem with that. So you guys are going to butt heads then, two of you moving forward, right? You're a go-ahead go ahead fighter too, straight into the thick of things. I should imagine so, Yeah. <laughs> That's it. Hey, um, your record, I just want to confirm your record now because it's hard to see a couple of the records online don't have everything listed. I just want to confirm. Is it 32 fights and 27 wins? That's it. Spot on, yeah. 32, 27. Yeah, cool. And uh, you already had the IKF World Flyweight Championship, the WSC Super Flyweight International Championship and the WBC Super Flyweight Championship. Any others added to that now? Yeah. Um, I've got the ISK. Um, and I've got uh, just like the Southern Area title and I've got um, the IKF British as well. Uh, but this this fight's for um, the Moisa Grand Prix world title. Awesome, awesome. That's awesome. Actually, I heard in one of, in your last fight, in the one against the Nanu girl, uh, the guy, the announcer said the Mai Tai Grand Prix. Did you hear him? <laughs> was that uh, Mai oh, Tai? Yeah, I don't know. The Mai Tai. I thought it was a cocktail competition yeah. or something. <laughs> uh, did he? <laughs> the, uh, it's probably a long night for him. <laughs> that's it that's it all right um so against this girl man i'd all prepared for talking about charlotte gray i'd done a little bit of a look at her because that was the only thing i'd seen on online on your on your post so tell me about this uh Frances francesca what is well, what's I, sort of background um well i was i was waiting for a new poster to be to put it up but it never came so um yeah she's good she's she's forward uh quite aggressive um likes to get into the clinch um, so, but if she's going to get in a clinch with me, she's not going to like it. So she's just very walking forward, long knees. She's a little bit taller than me, um, yeah. but I'm used to that. So that Charlotte Gray was kind of a rangy looking girl too. Is that something you're kind of preparing for before? Yeah, exactly. Um, and then I was going to fight um, a Swedish girl and she was short. Um, and then another one, another one. But uh, it doesn't really matter. I'm, I've trained like I'd fight anyone. So when it kept changing it didn't really matter to me yeah and the, so your general plan is just your own sort of style rather than adapting too much to the other people is that would that be right to say yeah i mean when you fight if you if you know something about someone you might you know throw a certain, you might be working the same like a little bit more certain than something else but yeah i pretty much just concentrate on myself um i don't really watch them too much i let andy and liam do that and i just sort of concentrate on training and what would be her sort of key weapons other than just pressing forward? Uh, I think she likes the knees. Yeah, knees and clinch. Um, yeah. I think that's her main thing. Um, but yeah, I'm like I say, I'm happy. I'm happy to do that if that's what she wants to do. 
Perfect. Okay, so this uh, Muay Thai Grand Prix event, uh, it's a London-based event and you're from London, so it must be good for you, right? Yeah, I love fighting there. I've fought there a few times now. Um, it sort of feels like my home show now. I am signed. I'm signed to Muay Thai Grand Prix. Um, so they always look after you a little bit better and stuff like that. But um, yeah, I love fighting in London, obviously. I've got a bigger crowd and just feel like, you know, I only got to get in the car and, and go 30 minutes. So I haven't got to travel far. So yeah, so it's like... It's good for me. So the crowd would be pretty, pretty biased then for you, or is she also from London? Uh, no, nah, she, she's she's from, she's from Spain, but I know she spent quite a lot of time in the UK. Yep. Um, and she fought for a gym here for a while, so she'll probably have quite a few fans as well. Um, but yeah, hopefully it'll be a bit, bit louder for me. As you as you get closer to the event, like it's only uh, is it three days away now. Um, yeah. What's the feeling inside? Do you start to get the jitters at all? You feel good, more excited? What's what's the feeling for you? I just get excited. I'm excited now. I feel like, you know, like when you're a kid and Christmas is only two days away. Yeah, that's how that's how I feel. <laughs> that's, awesome. that's um, awesome. Yeah, I don't really get I don't get nervous until probably like an hour beforehand. I think if you're getting nervous this far out, you probably should find something else to do. Um, <laughs> do you know what I mean? It's a bit. Um, I got two kilos to cut, which is nothing. I feel I feel wicked. Um, I get my confidence out of training hard. So now why should I feel nervous? If you know what I mean? Yeah, that's what uh, most of the the big fighters say, right? That you build your confidence and your psychological edge by just. They always say leaving no stone unturned. You see, nearly every fighter and every trainer yeah. says that. So it's true, though. It is true. Yeah. Yeah, hundred percent. That's true. So in bad renown, uh, bad company, obviously it's around Jim. How do they prepare you guys over there? What's what's the deal? What's your sort of schedule in the in the thick of the fight camp? Uh, it's just a mixture between pads, sparring, um, and everyone like looks out for each other there. Do you know what I mean? If 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 someone needs some pads or whatever, um, obviously I've got Andy, who's my main coach, looking after me. Richard's been involved a lot. This one, the one that actually owns Bad Co. Um, and yeah, just it's just like a nice, nice atmosphere because, and especially because I'm fighting as well as two other fighters from the, the gym this time. Um, so we're all, like, you know, it's like a team. That's perfect. That's perfect, right? And then yeah. you'll just get you'll get the whole team in there in the in the crowd. You get everyone's family, and it'll just be you know, I can blow the roof off when you guys come out, right? Exactly, exactly. People that will like, you know, go for one of us will shout for everyone else. Um, so yeah, no, it's, it's a nice. It's, it's nice to have people from you know like your team fight on the same show as well. For sure, as long as they're not too many back to back, it might be a bit harder for the for the preparation, the trainers, and that, right? Yeah, true. Hopefully, they've sorted that out on the order. <laughs> yeah, although that, I know from from what Andy was saying here and there, he sounds pretty busy with people fighting everywhere. So he's probably used to that, right? Yeah, Andy's always busy doing saying He's obviously just had his own show. Um, Obviously, he does train. He trains a lot of fighters, um, but yeah. So I'm sure it will be, be there on day. That's it. So obviously, working hard recently in that downtime through the COVID, did you have much chance to like kind of delve into new techniques and stuff? Because obviously, the fights aren't coming as thickly. Did you have a chance to learn more skills and that that you wouldn't have had if COVID didn't come around? Yeah, definitely. Had, like, had time just to work on things because sometimes in fight camps you don't get as much time just to literally just learn. Um, and I was quite lucky that Andy was like on FaceTime with me quite a lot. And we was doing like, we was doing exercises, but then we was working on different things as well. Um, and then my other half, um, he holds pads for me as well. And we were just working on things because there's no pressure for anything. And like we say, we had no idea when we was going to fight, did we? So there was no point in just, you know, there's no point. You can't be in a fight camp all the time, not knowing when you're going to fight. So definitely had like more time to work on my left kick um, and just little things. Yeah, 100%. Perfect. And you said your your condition, your body's feeling great. What about injuries? Anything like that? All feeling pretty pretty good. Fingers crossed. I don't want to say it because I might fall down <laughs> the stairs in a minute or something. <laughs> uh, I'm all good. Nothing is wrong with me this fight. So like, for you, like my last fight, yeah, um, my my shoulder was in a bad way. I couldn't even throw a hook. Um, obviously, I didn't say that, and you probably wouldn't have known in my fight. Um, but it was killing me. So for a month afterwards, I couldn't throw a punch. Um, but yeah, got nothing wrong with me this time. See, and right now, three days out, you'd be just doing some light work today and like nothing for a couple of days. Is that right? Yeah, like I did a little run this morning. Um, I'll hit pads light tonight and then that'll probably be my last session, really. Cut the two kilos on the Friday morning. Um, and yeah, good to go. 
on the on those last couple of days, what does it feel like leading up? Do you feel like you've got to get out for a walk? You got to do something because you're used to going full ball every day, and then to suddenly stop, it must feel, it feels a bit strange, right? Yeah, it does a little bit. Um, I've always got things that I just can end like do. Do you know what I mean? I've just end up doing random things, um, watch a bit of football, listen to a bit of country music, um, take the dog for a walk, just do like little things to just fill your day up. Otherwise, you start going a bit mad. That's it. And what about the other sort of little little one percent things that people have been doing lately, like strength and strength and conditioning, recovery, etc. Anything new in that realm for you? Uh, so I've had um, the same strength and conditioning coach now since like my fourth or fifth fight. Um, he was at the gym and he was like, you know, seeing me train and stuff. And I was really lucky that he said like, I'm gonna help you. Blah blah. blah. And like, he trains me every week. Like, sponsors me. Um, so I've been with him now for years and years. Um, and then I've got, I, I went to some sessions with Stephen, Stephen Campbell um, up in Leeds. They're, he's the one that like, all the bad company guys train with. Um, so, yeah, so I've, I've been doing quite a lot of it, but I feel good. I've got a place in London as well that um, it's like an injury place. It's like it's more of an in, injury prevention sort of session, um, but that really helps as well. Yeah, that's what people say is very good idea to do, right? To to work it. No one really does that actually. A lot of people treat the injury after, right? So it's a it's a it's exactly. kind of a new age thinking to get into things and preventing before it actually occurs. Exactly, rather than, yeah. I, I know a, a guy over in Australia that does that work with people, like you know, catching people before they get the chance to be injured, strengthening little weaknesses and that. So it's a good idea, man. Yeah, well, I've had um, some like bad knee injuries, but in the past, um, and it's all just like fast twitch balance and you, you know you don't sweat as much and you're not out of breath as much like in a condition as like a conditioning session but they're just as hard you just you get like a different sort of ache if you know what i mean yeah yeah for sure for sure yeah all right well um grace it's good to hear that you're in great condition you sound very good mindset ready to rock and roll yeah. and uh yeah looking forward to see you bring that belt home and and next fight should just be the defender right yeah 100 i've got a big fight in august as well planned um, and then I'll probably be defending this um, end of the year. In August, um, you said you got a fight. What? Are, uh, where's that one? Is that the same same uh, association, right? Same promotion? Uh, yeah, they're involved. They're doing it with someone else as well. Um, and that's going to be a big fight. Uh, it's in Bolton. So, yeah, I, I don't know if I can say I'm fighting yet and what for, but um, it's a big one. No worries. We'll pay attention to it and, and, and get an update yeah, yeah. after. All right, Grace, so thanks so much for your time and, and good luck with the fight no and worries. paying attention. Um, okay, thanks, Grace. And thank you again to Kieran Carruthers and Roadhouse Macau. Yeah, massive thank you to Roadhouse. Um, I literally, my fight camp is so much easier now. I've got him on board and supporting me. Um, I can't thank Kieran and his family enough. Um, they're lovely people. I can't wait to meet them. Um, and yeah, I just can't say thank you enough to them. That's it. Uh, Kieran can teach you some of his techniques. His favorite technique is the headbutt jabs. From his last fight, that was the most evident technique in his game. Oh, so yeah? I'd love to see one. it. <laughs> <laughs> All right. All right. Thanks. Catch you later, Grace. Cheers. Cheers. Cheers.